Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and over the past week or so, we've had some more information about the iPhone 12, as well as new Macs coming out later this year, and maybe even one this coming week. It's hard to say at this point, but I wanted to talk about all of those things as well as iOS 14 beta three. So I'll start with that. Now, iOS 14 beta three, many people expected it today. Although based on what we had before, I really expect it tomorrow. Now, Based on what Apple has done in the past, this seems likely, but there are no guarantees. Apple can change this at any moment. They may not even push it out this week, but it would be really unlikely if they didn't. So really I'm expecting iOS 14 beta three, probably on Tuesday, the 21st, although they could push it sometime later in the week. You just never know exactly what Apple's going to do, but tomorrow seems to be the most likely based on what we've seen in the past. So that would be two weeks since beta two was released along with iOS 14 public beta versions. So hopefully we'll see public beta three that they'll actually call it since they put the numbers in line. And along with that, we should see some new features, maybe Apple car key for iOS 14 and things like that. So expect a couple different updates on that as well as iPad OS, Mac OS, Big Sur, and all of those as well. Now, as far as a couple new things before I talk about the leaks or rumors, the first new thing is Apple said they're going to release new emoji coming this fall. Now I covered this in a previous video a little bit and you'll see here's some of the new emoji from their press release. And these are just to really keep them up to date with the Unicode consortium with different things that they add. So there's actually a consortium that handles emoji and they update it regularly throughout the year. And then Apple, Android and Microsoft, or I should say Apple, Google and Microsoft will update their devices to have the new ones included with their own own artwork. So you can see here's some of them and I'll link this page in the description. If you want to check it out yourself with all of the different changes. So you have different things for those with disabilities as well as some different gender options and or relationship options, as well as some different animals as well. So all of those are coming later this fall, according to Apple. Now there's one other thing I didn't mention with iOS 14 beta two that people mentioned later on, and that has to do with the magnifier. If you're someone that uses the magnifier and you turn that on by going to settings, accessibility, magnifier and turn it on, it will allow you to use your camera on the back as a magnifier. Now, once you've opened magnifier for the first time, triple pressing the power sleep wake button. You can then add it to your home screen by searching for it in your app list. So just search for it here. You have to open it first or it won't show up, but the magnifier is brand new and redesigned. Now we've had the magnifier before where you can zoom in and kind of see text a little bit easier, but now we have some new options as well for all sorts of things such as contrast brightness, can change the brightness of the image. We can change the different colors as well as turn the flashlight on at the same time. And then we have some options as well. So you can change these around if you'd like, and it's all new and it's in beta two. So it's something I didn't cover before. So I wanted to let you know about it. So you can add it to your home screen if you'd like, just by searching it in your app list, pressing and holding on it. Now, the first bit of information about the iPhone 12 from today actually has to do with DigiTimes saying that the iPhone 12 will in fact support 5g in 2020, meaning sub six, 5g and millimeter wave 5g. However, that may change in 2021, but I suspect that if they're going to use Qualcomm modems, they'll have the option for either version of 5g and whether or not that carries on to all devices, whether or not it be this mock-up of the iPhone 12 pro, or maybe the larger size, the iPhone 12 pro max, maybe only having the sub six and millimeter wave versions, or some places may have it turned off altogether. Apple can specify that even if they all include the exact same modem. So on the high end models, they may have that enabled with antennas. And then maybe on the smaller versions, they won't have that. They'll just have maybe sub six or just 4g. So it just depends. And depending on where you live, such as I live near Charlotte, the 5G coverage for millimeter wave is very small for Verizon and AT&T. It's possible, but it's really only at a couple street corners next to a couple buildings that have 5G. If you have sub six, well, that's kind of everywhere if you have T-Mobile and some other carriers. So that's sort of everywhere. So I would at least expect sub six and I'd like to see that, but to have the option to turn it off, I think will be there in settings as well. Now with the iPhone 12 display, there has been a ton of conflicting information. Some are saying it's going to get the ProMotion display. Others are saying it won't. I suspect Apple, if they introduce a ProMotion display on an iPhone, it will be on the Pro models. So maybe the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max, or whatever else they have, because 
it's got pro in the name. So that would make more sense to me, although the only way to know at this point is to wait and see because it seems like we have conflicting information from different people that leak information. So I would just wait and see. I can't imagine them leaving it out at this point, but maybe they will. And if you didn't see my other video with the iPhone 12, I do expect them to include a braided cable like we have here from the Mac Pro. So I would expect a white braided cable or maybe one to match the different colors of the iPhones. I would love to see that. But this is from the Mac Pro and it's an Apple cable and you can see it's braided. I would love to see this come to different devices. Now, speaking of the iPad and ProMotion, ProMotion is great on these devices, but there's supposedly going to be a new feature with the Apple Pencil. So with the Apple Pencil, the second generation Apple Pencil is great because it charges right on the iPad. But one thing that a patent recently showed is that Apple is investigating maybe being able to capture the color in the environment with your pencil to draw with. So for example, you would go into notes, maybe hit a button on the side of the pencil, capture a color. Maybe we could capture color from the iPhone, maybe the weather color, and then start to draw with it and have that color on the iPad. I would love to see that feature. And I think it would work great for those that are artists or want to capture color from their environment and incorporate it into whatever they're working on. I think that would be a great way to do that. Maybe using the cameras on the devices as well. But if you had sort of a camera built into the end of this pencil, I think that would be super helpful and I would love to see it. But at this point, it's just a patent and we know that Apple's actually investigating it for the Apple Pencil. There's no guarantee that we'll ever see it, but hopefully they'll have that in the third generation with a little camera in the tip of the pencil or off to the side. Now, many leakers such as Mark Gurman and Sonny Dixon have said that the next gen iMac is coming very soon. And now there's even more information saying that. So we have more information saying that it could come as soon as this week if they've got it ready. Now, I would suspect that's an Intel version of the iMac with maybe a slight redesign, but I'm surprised Apple would release a redesign until maybe they have the arm version or the Apple Silicon version ready for delivery. But if we see a full redesign, I would love to see that. And hopefully we'll see it soon since people kind of are seeing outdated hardware on the iMacs at this point. Now, according to Apple, we are going to see new Macs by the end of the year with their new Apple Silicon inside. And so the first rumored one is going to be surprisingly a 13 inch MacBook Pro. So along with that, we're supposedly going to see a MacBook Pro like this. This is a 2016 13 inch. So maybe we'll see one like this with Thunderbolt 4 maybe something along those lines, as well as a new MacBook Air with Apple Silicon. I would love to see other Macs, but to have those two by the end of the year, I think would be really impressive and to see how they compare with what we've got now. But it looks like they're on schedule at least to release one of them, according to Apple, but the leaks say that it's going to be a MacBook Pro and a MacBook Air. Now, other than that, there's not a ton of other information this week, other than the Apple Maps vehicles are being seen in Sweden, Norway, and Finland. So if you're someone that uses Apple Maps, or maybe you've wanted to use Apple Maps, but you couldn't because it wasn't very good as far as compared to, say, Street View or Google Maps or others, now you should have some of those abilities. So if we go into Maps, within places like San Francisco, we have Flyover, we have different guides, and we also have a lot of information on the streets. So showing streets that are shut down or maybe different traffic options and even 3D buildings and things like that, it looks like Apple is mapping that so we can have look around in this area as well. So if we kind of zoom in here. Let's see if we can zoom in and get look around. So now we can get look around, hit these little binoculars here, and we can look around the highway. There's not a whole lot to see, but it's Apple's version of Street View, and it looks like they're mapping different areas of the world to have it worldwide. Now, hopefully we see more information in maps around the world by the end of the year. Maps is getting better and better. And if you've used it locally, I personally find it's it's pretty much as good as Google Maps. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. But once it's updated from iOS 14 with all of the information about EV charging and things, it could be really great for different areas of the country or different countries in general. But let me know your thoughts about that in the comments below. That's it for this particular week. There isn't a ton new from last week, but I'm looking forward to those new Apple Silicon Macs and an iPhone 12 in a few months and also iOS 14, hopefully as soon as tomorrow. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.